I think we're live. I think we are. Welcome to Shona Ray Studios Live Converse Subversives from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. It happens to be Stampede this week, but I didn't. I didn't wear a cowboy hat today. I did that on the weekend. Okay, so um, I'm Shona Ray, and we're coming live to you from my studio. Thanks to Calgary Arts Development Association, who uh, has given us a grant so that we could learn how to use all this equipment and do this project. So um, today, we would like to um, make an acknowledgement to, um, in the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge that we live, work, and play on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Sasika, Kanai, Pekani, the Sutsina, the Stony Nakoda Nations, the Métis Nation Region 3, and all people, Indigenous and non, who live, work, and play, make their homes in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta, Lambac. <laughs> it happens every time. Get all choked up, but that's okay. Um, again, I would like to thank Kada, and um, today we are going to do the big reveal of the second piece that we've got. It's really close to finish. Fish, finished enough to reveal our Baba Yaga's doll hut. So, for those of you who checked, uh, who saw my Instagram post. You saw the head of this this morning and the little spiral inside the eye, which is very difficult to get on this camera. So maybe later we'll show it on the other camera. In the meantime, uh, we've been working very diligently on Baba Yaga to finish all the components and get it all ready. And, um, and we've been working on Atalanta at the same time. So when we do our next live stream, we'll be revealing Atalanta probably on the wall of an exhibition uh, that we're host that the old Okotoks Art Gallery is hosting for me in September. So we'll probably do our next live stream in September, unless I have enough nerve to do it in August all by myself, because our dear assistant, friend, and colleague, Jennifer, just got a catagram. I'm going to Scotland. <laughs> so I won't be here next month. <laughs> no, she's doing a research and creation to exhibition project. Yep. <laughs> so Start to finish. <coughs> so tell them about it while I... Sure, will you go and <laughs> die a little bit? <laughs> um, I will be going to Scotland on the... I'll arrive on the 27th of this month. Um, I'll be there for 34 days looking at castles and um, ancient sites from the Neolithic era. I'll be seeing standing stone circles and uh, fairy sites and going to museums and all sorts of fun stuff and learning stories and just every wonderful thing that you can think of and a uh, little bit of witchcraft here and there and some and performance art. Do yeah. you have a title for your yes, for it, your project? The whole project is called A Pilgrimage of Stories and Stones. Nice, yes. right. So that That's will be so what I will be getting up to and uh, all of the fun stuff that happens will be on Instagram and the website which is storiesandstones.ca. Um, we should pop that, in, pop that in after after our broadcast for sure because that's going to be very exciting. And for those of you who haven't gone to Jennifer's TikTok or Instagram, you should get over there because it is really magical. So okay, but let's go. Um, we're going to start off with the. The carving of the torso. We told you there would be a lot of carving. I didn't know if I, I'd actually get it done, but we did it. I just bit the bullet and we just did it. So here we're going to start with um, the first video. Is um, I just, you know, sometimes I draw things on and then I erase them and then I redraw them. And um, this time I'm drawing it 
as clearly as I can because then I'm thinking, what if somebody else has to carve this, you know? Because with COVID, we always have to think about those things now. But it turned out that I could do the, at least I did, I started by doing the outline. And again, that gives anyone who has to take over a little bit more, uh, you know, they don't have to make those design decisions. Because we all draw flames, but everybody draws flames differently. So I don't want them to have to think about that kind of thing unless they want to. So there I am carving. Um, my tremor's pretty good there. <laughs> of course, there's times when it gets out of control. Then I'm going in and undercutting with a little ball burr. Turned out that I got quite a bit. Did you do some of the carving on the torso too? Yeah, I thought you did. And then uh, just at the last minute, we decided we needed something a little more, and Jennifer went in there and just did another eye. And I don't know, I think you've done about two dozen eyes for me now, carved, at least, at least. So she didn't, she just went at it, you know. And um, I showed you all the, what I'm showing in this video is all the different bits that she uses. You know, you think you're going to use this bit, but those uh, antlers really get in the way, you know. And uh, so you have to be really... But what I liked about, I showed in here, is the different bits and, and um, how you're getting in there and getting all this detail. And... And then you go back in, which I do too, go back in with that pencil, get it all dark again, so you really can pop out, really get in there and pop out the more detail with more confidence. It's sometimes it's hard to see white on white, you know, what you're doing. And uh, so that was really beautiful. And it just so happened the way the skull was, uh, Jennifer left this one tear to, and you'll see how that matches the rest of the piece later on. So there she is, just finishing up that eye, getting it all nice and smooth. And then we have the feet. Then we'll do, we'll show you the, the final of the feet. We showed you the top of the feet, how we were carving that. And now we're going to show you how we went in and got the underside. So I start by, again, always by drawing. And sometimes you draw and then you go back into it, as I said before, and we showed you with Jennifer's carving. So I'm just getting a nice strong line there where I want the feet, I wanted to keep that natural part of the leg and I I think we we did good on that and then just taking away some of that real beautiful oh I hated doing that but I, that really beautiful natural um, surface of the antler sometimes we want to leave that natural thing but it doesn't really when you're finished the carving, it doesn't really say the same thing. So you have to get rid of it. It's always a heartbreak for me. I love the natural bone. And so here, this is, oh yeah, um, carving the twos. I left that right to last because I knew some of them would end up with a, quite a sharp point. And I didn't know if they would be delicate or not and breakable. But as it turns out, this little thing is fallen off the bench more than once and none of them broke so antlers are incredibly hard incredibly hard so there I'm just you know using my diamond burr to shape and smooth out those um, nails and the, the transition between the nail and the toes and there we go um, Jennifer going through with the bristle brush. She bristle brushed the entire skull with a green bristle brush 
uh, the entire skull and then also the legs, anything we cart. She's bristle brushed it afterwards. It gives it a nice smooth finish. Sometimes we might take some sandpaper to it as well, just whatever it needs. But if you're going to use sandpaper, don't use metal sandpaper. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but wood sandpapers, the sandpaper you use for woodworking, that works on bone, antler, all these natural materials. The metal, uh, emery sandpaper, we call it, it really doesn't work. I don't know why. I don't I don't know why. So there we go. We got the feet and then we're going to go to the head fitting and the neck carving. Just uh I could not believe how beautifully this head fit on that against that dear uh, femur. I assumed I would be having to change the femur, but I never had to touch it, which is always a joy to me because I, I love the natural shapes. Just drilled into it more holes than I needed because you never know. It's better to have more is, is okay because it's all going to be covered anyways. And wasn't sure. I mean, there are all these natural holes on the underneath of that owl skull but I wasn't actually sure how it would work. It's extremely fragile underneath there. The skulls are, are so thin and lightweight. And here's Jennifer finishing up the carving on the eyes that she did on the torso. Just, uh, I just showed a little bit of, we, we showed you quite a bit of carving, but you can see she's going in with very fine bits now and just getting that undercut so that the natural shadows show up and also when we paint it, it there's a place to hold the paint. And then um, she's just, just finishing off the texture of the feathered neck. And so now I'm gonna let you see that. And I'm gonna hold this up closer to the camera so you can see the, um, the texture there. I think it worked out really quite beautifully. Do We're, you want to see camera two? Should we try the camera yeah, two and see, see if we two. can't get closer? There you go. There. There you can really see it now. Covering that up. I want it. I, the, the torso is pretty well finished now, so um, we're just going to go like that. So there you go, that powerful skull, that beautiful neck. And, and you'll see that I showed a little bit of the painting process. Forgot at the very beginning, but I think I've showed you painting before. So it's not like you haven't seen how I started, but it's really beautiful. And each one of those eyes has a little tear for a dear friend of mine who gave me the skull, the owl skull. It passed away very suddenly this spring, so I wanted to honor her. Anyways, we'll keep moving. We have so many, there was a lot of work to do this little, gr this little hut, doll hut. So here we go. Um, what was next? Oh, the torso painting. So let's, get that going. So we started by giving it just a kind of a, a yellowish ochre finish all the way around the skull, rubbed it in, and now I'm taking that bristle brush and I'm taking most of it away. And the same with the neck. We, we actually added a little green on that, but still we're really removing a lot of the paint. And then we're going in rub brushing using a brush to get into those really deep recesses this is all oil paint i use and then rubbing it back and there i am doing it without gloves on really shouldn't and then just taking a little bit of that red paint off my cloth and just giving a hint of it on the on the neck but you know it's my process is extremely intuitive so i'm going oh i know i want a little blue in it 
Yvonne is to thank for that. I must have blue in every painting. But um, I, I'm an intuitive pa painter. I do have excellent instruction in color theory, and I really love uh, the idea of um, how colors pop each other around, you know, and everything, and play off each other. But this work, I find, is just mostly intuitive. So I put on a layer, I let it sit, and then I come back later and I rubber down. Here I'm rubbing with a very fresh cloth, nothing, no paint on this cloth. And I might use my cloths over and over again. Throw a little blue there. Oh, I just love, I kept this just because I think it looks so cute. I look like I'm rubbing her, wiping her little butt. <laughs> But, um, and then just a little bit of blue here and there, uh, just to pop out that red and orange colors, you know, the compliment, I love complimentary discord. So, um, thanks to John Cooper. And just, uh, basically, uh, this probably happened, uh, I may have gone in a third day, but I didn't want to overdo it, you know, like it's easy to overdo. So there we go. That part's done. But the next, um, the next thing is we have to finish the keyhole. We have to finish the frame, which we ended up calling the flame frame for the pendant that we finished and we showed you finished. So um, let's just go into the keyhole and then when you see the keyhole, I'll uncover the rest of the sculpture because it'll kind of show it. So there we go, it, there it's soldered, all those ball rivets are soldered. Cutting, I'm cleaning, I'm filing. As you know, that's a huge part of what we do. We seem to spend more time filing and cleaning up, especially soldered pieces, a lot. So I just showed you a few minutes of it, but. And I bristle brush to clean it up, as I've said before, and then I go back in with um, my files or even this grinder, you know, like just get those really difficult spots, get in there and um, don't be afraid to go back and forth with your tools. You think you're finished filing? Sometimes you're not. Okay, and then a little, um, I wanted to give it the dappled finish on the outside of the keyhole. I wasn't sure if the top of the frame would come out just the way I liked it, so I leave that to last, and I, I wanted a just a real straight polish on the inside. So I worked, 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 worked at that. And at some point you'll see my fingers will all be black. Here I am cleaning up with a cupper and then, oh, no, the frame didn't turn out quite like I want. You can see I was polishing it and it didn't, the texture didn't turn out. So I just retextured it and there we go, it's done. Now, I left two of the ball rivets just to do manually because they were right where they would be soldered was right on another solder seam and I had enough to keep it to attach it to the to the torso of the sculpture so I just I just riveted them on so they are completely decorative no function the yeah, others all function and there you go. Here we are, fitting it into the f torso. And you can see from this picture, the, f the painting has not been finished. Or, oh yeah, the painting must be finished because I can't attach it without. Oh, and I had to do the toenails last. And of course, I gave her red toenails. And then they were still a little sticky, so I just rubbed them back. We can always have more right? Some of the nail holes needed to be re-drilled. Sometimes they get stuck up with paint, you know, or just paint and, and dust. So there, 
It's a little finicky getting one, two, three, four, five, six rivets in all at once, but there we go. A little cut here, a little plier there, and next thing you know, you've got the whole thing in. Let me tell you, this took quite a while only. <laughs> or any of those doing this at home took a few it takes longer than I show you know and then when it's all what I want I just bend those rivets over because I'm going to be felting on the inside just bend them over so they just all get bent over so now I'm going to show you the front of the sculpture because now you've seen it. Now you've seen it. And it's not completely finished. This this arm here, um, I want it to come right up. And it will when I'm finished uh, needle felting. But I had to wait quite a few days longer than I expected to get the needle felting done because of the paint. It was a little bit too wet, and I don't want to get all... I, and rub it all off and have to go back in once you've... I, I wanted it to be good and dry. So we waited, and then I ran out of time to finish the felting. But that's okay. It'll all be finished for September. And uh, so the next thing we were working on is the flame frame. And that was the flame... That was the frame for this pendant that we made the key the key to the sculpture to Baba Yaga this is the key to Baba Yaga so um, now we're going to go on to that I think yeah I believe so the flame so I think I left it um, left you with I shaped the started shaping the flames and here now I'm uh, drilling, locating for decorative rivets and different layers. We ended up with all together three layers on the frame. So, um, Jennifer spent hours filing those flames and getting them all and then when I went, well, you see, it's pretty funny. But there we go. We're getting it all together. And uh, Brianne came in and soldered rivets for us. And I, um, I actually found those videos of the soldering she did on the red shoes we, eventually. Anyways, here she is soldering our rivets that actually these soldered rivets hold the frame to the torso they have nothing to do with decoration but um they just the thing i love about brianne soldering she never rushes anything she uses a nice flush fluffy flame and she never worries and because she does that, these wires do not melt, even though they're very tiny on a very large piece. And it's, it's really quite, she's quite lovely to watch her solder. She's the queen of the solder bench here at Shona Ray Studios. And it's great to learn from one another. And we're just making sure the solder runs through to the front. There we go. And then there's Jennifer grinding off those little places and cleaning up so that you can't see it from that, the good side, I, I guess I'll call it. And then filing, 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 I'm telling you, all day. She spent all day filing and cleaning up these little flames that's a big job and then bristle brushing starting with green which we seldom do but in this case we did and then we go green yellow white 
red and then <laughs> I did mine in fast mode and I slowed it down but it's still I couldn't slow it down anymore so there I went with the polishing tips and did the best I could and um, that's that's the frame flame to this all cleaned up and ready and then the next video number seven is the flame frame finish to install just like the key so here we go here's them all cleaned up and polished there they are all oxide and and we cut up all these spacer rivets thinking we were going to do more spacing than we did in the end you see here i'm grinding down this ball rivet what happened is when i went to hang the um the pendant the ball rivets actually got in the way and when i couldn't do it so i had to grind that one right down but it, it still looks lovely it still looks like a ball rivet when you you take the pendant away and there I am I getting the first is it three two layers three layers and then oh just a little ball rivet on each on the back side so that when you go to rivet them it has a little place for the metal to pull into and it won't be can't be pulled out so here we are all ready to rivet them but we can't because of those other rivets for attaching it to the torso I actually had to make a little river specialized rivet block put in my vise so I could rivet those ball rivets just like the little dips I have in my flat block. I made one now, we have one. I have a bigger one, but I had to remake this one because it was too big. So there you go. You just make your own tools as you go, and that is so not unusual in our studio. We have to, and it always blows my mind that I'm able to rip it with my hand shaking like that. <laughs> Anyways, we make it happen. That's what that's the magic at Shona Ray Studios. We don't care if we have a challenge. And there you go. It was a lot of bending and twisting and turning and and uh it didn't happen quite that quickly, of course. It never does. But I just show you the highlights. Gives you the idea. If you have any specific questions, feel free to call us or to text us or write us or ask questions we don't mind i don't mind at all so here we go um what am i doing there installing it. oh installing but shouldn't have we gone to number eight the wiring still going. oh we're still oh we're installing the flame frame right forgot about that that was a little tricky as you can see here it was really hard for me to figure out how to get those uh, uh, pliers in there and I, again I ended up using the handle as uh, a way of prying the prongs over so it would uh, be secure to the roof of the mouth really if Where? that's what it is that part of the is the roof of the mouth that part of the stall. So I just, uh, by guess and by golly, whatever it takes, we managed to get these pieces together. And each skull is different. Every skull is different. Um, there's, that's just the way it is. And I don't mind. Uh, it's really, they say it's really good for your brain to learn new things, especially as you get older. So every single one of these sculptures, I'm learning something new about each skull, even if it's another deer skull, each skull is specific to itself. So, okay, and so there you go. Here we go. There's the flame coming at you. Want to use number two? Oh, I think we're good. 
I think we can see what's going on. And then I think I'll put on the pendant. It holds pretty good. <laughs> it holds pretty good. Like it won't take a lot of shaking around. It, but it does hold on there. See? And that's a little tip, but that's okay. It's a little tip there. But it will hang straight. And you'll, if you come to the exhibition, you'll see it on straight. So, anyways, there's that, and now we have, uh, the next thing is, okay, so then we had to wire the hands, the legs, the, the teeth, remember the teeth that go inside the belly, and um, we're going to be finishing this piece. We're really close to finishing the piece now. So there we are, wiring the leg. I had to try a few different ideas out to get it to work, but it, in the end, it all worked out really well, actually. And I didn't have to shave the inside at all. I didn't have to shave. It just fit in super tight, which was awesome. This is before I painted. I just wanted to check and make sure that would work. Then um, wiring the teeth. Basically what I am doing here is wiring the teeth and um, making a tangle of wire for the felt to tangle around so they will not fall out. And as it turned out when I actually installed I had way more wire than I needed and I was able to cut some away. but. Better, better, best to have more and cut it away than not to have enough and have your teeth falling out. Anybody? <laughs> I can tell you from experience, it really sucks. <laughs> Anyways, there we go. Just, you know, drilling and wiring into those teeth. You know, they're all... I just, they're so beautiful. And of course they fit fine. Oh, drill into the lilac. And I have to tell you, the lilac smell divine when we drill into it. It is the most beautiful smelling wood. I'm glad I've got a whole bunch saved. I'll get Herb to make me more. He made me one stool with the legs, but oh my God, it just, the wood smells beautiful when it's being cut. We'll use more of it in the future. I had this idea that I would make stick people, you see. That's why I saved so much of it. There we go. Wiring those teeth on the wee lilac branches. Twirl it, you know, just give it a nice twirl. There we go. All good to go. Oh, there you go. Oh, and there I twist it and I actually poked it right into another hole in the wood. I, I just make lots of holes and then use them as I need them. There we go. And there. So there's, and then the next video will be... So we've got all the legs, the teeth, the hands wired, then we're going to just felt it all together. And uh, I think we might start, what did we start with? The hands. So um, felting the little fingers, felting around the fingers. I had to show you that. That was the biggest stick. I couldn't believe it. It was just a huge stick I pulled out of that piece of wall. But uh, I love the yellow ochre of this wall. I'm pretty sure I got this from the woman at the black uh what's the is it the blackfoot market she sells on the weekends and she dyes her own wool mm. and i buy it from her her name is ann goodwin and um that color i just love it especially for this piece but it's kind of a mossy yellow ochre I have a golden yellow if you'd like some. <laughs> that would be. 
Well, I do have some honeycomb yellow that I mm. bought from, for, um, well, I used it in The Evil Magician, which I took home yesterday. Oh. Yeah, little yeah I know that color. So there you go, tangling up the wire and then felting it in. Stuffing the wool in there. For those of you who have needle felted, you know it's like hundreds of pokes. Poke, 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 poke. There we go. I think. I forgot to add the felting of the teeth. And that's what I see. That's what's confused me. Mm. Oh, well. We'll show it another time. I'll, maybe I can add... Someday when I have more time, I'll add it to the video. Oh, my God. So this is what I wanted you to see the most only. See how I've got this arm wired up here? Um, that keeps it in place while I'm felting. But I have to do it again. But I, I just want it to be... I want that arm up. Right now, it's back down again. And here I am just using a piece of wire that we're making a frame for Atalanta <laughs> out of to push the wool in. It's okay, whatever come, whatever's handy, you know. I just grab whatever's handy and work with it. I'm not fussy. I'm just... So much, so much poking. Like those hands probably took me, all together those little fingers took me about three or four evenings to finish. And I could keep going on them. I'm really sorry I missed the, you missed the video of the teeth because as I was going, I literally had to cut teeth away. There, there seemed lots of room before I started. I had the felt in there. And then all of a sudden, there wasn't. So I, to cut those teeth, I used wire cutters. And they just cut that jawbone off like no pro, nobody's business. I'd like, I'll share that with you another time. It's really interesting. I found it really interesting. I had to do that. Yeah, yeah, At just home. use wire cutters yeah, to... Yeah, use side cutters and just um, like just on the edge of bone that I'm trying to get rid of. Yeah. And just a little bit of pressure and just... Pops it just right pops off. It was really interesting. So there you go. A uh, little known secret at Shona Ray, revealed at Shona Ray Studios. Anyway, so there you go. There's Baba Yaga's hut. Um, very close to finished. I, I literally, um, after we uh, put in the flame frame, we realized that we wanted to put more flames here. One here, one here, you know, like one, two, on each side of this one, so that they will kind of point at it and create another um, triangle. There's a lot of triangles in this piece, and so it's good to repeat that as often as possible. And um, for me, the triangle represents the uterus, uh, the trinity of the goddess, the young woman, the mature mother, and the old crone. And um, it represents so many other things to people universally, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Um, and in almost every religion, there's, a, there's threes, you know? So uh, it's a very magical number. And the triangle is... I love it. I, I work with it all the time. So um, there we go. The feet are done, as you can see, and they are glorious. I couldn't have had better help making those. And that eye below those teeth, I mean, that is just crazy good. And those eyes coming up the neck, that's kind of the, we have this sentence here, 
and a dot at the end of the sentence. That's kind of how I see it. And um, the, the triangle again here of the foot, like look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, it, I'm so blessed to have people in my life, strangers even in my life, who have brought me these most beautiful, beautiful natural objects to work with. I thank you all. I'm very grateful for it. Herb's a little nervous about it. <laughs> Maybe my neighbors are too. <laughs> but um, I am very eternally grateful for all the, the natural objects that come to us. So anyways, how, how long have we gone today? Are we... How's our time? 40 minutes. Okay, so we're going to keep it short. We have been working on Atalanta, and we have lots of, uh, we've been filming as we go, and uh, I just want to quickly show, it doesn't look like we've done much, but all the apples are made and things like that. There's lots going on, but I just wanted to share the inside of this skull with you. It is so beautiful. Like that's the the forehead of the bear and the underside of it, oh, of that piece of bone, it's right here. So this is, this is the piece we took out of the skull. Hard, hard, super hard. So this is the piece we took out of the skull, and this is the back side of it. Isn't that spectacular? Like, my grandson was in yesterday, and he said, Oh, Grandma, you've got to make a necklace with that. And, of course, I... As soon as I saw it, I went, oh my God, There, I will be using the underside of this bone to create a piece of art jewelry with. So, not for Adelant only. Adelant just going to get earrings. So, we want to change it up, you know. But the next time you see Atalanta, there'll be a bear claw coming out of that recess. And uh, so we have been working on her, and we have been filming, and we do have videos to edit for her. So we will be sharing those with you if I don't do a live stream in August by myself without my friend, who's going to be having the best time ever <laughs> in Scotland. Um, then we'll just do it straight from the gallery in September. So, and we, we, took the advice of a very wise woman in Banff, owns the Waterton Galleries there. Susan, thank you, once a month. That's manageable because that gives me time to film and edit and film and edit without um, being frantic. And like art has to be something you love doing. If once you get frantic, then you make mistakes. You saw that with the red shoes. So um, we're going to do what's right for the work because in the end, it doesn't matter all this other stuff. It's the work that really matters. The work, our friends, our family, right? Those are those are the important things in life. So by keeping everything in perspective. We'll do a better job of being an artist, a friend, and a wife, a grandmother, a mother, all those things, and a friend. Okay, so I want to thank Kata again. I want to thank Jennifer, Stephanie, and Brianne for assisting me with all this work that I'm doing in the studio. My studio mates, Cindy Lee and Cherry Deacon, and we have a new one a new studio mate joining us this week, Rebecca Light, and uh, Ron Chikora for all his consultation, the camera store for all their help and their wonderful supplies, of course, Sea Space King Edwards, all the tenants here who continue to be a delight. I want to also quickly mention 
that we're in the last 10 days or so of the Kitsch exhibition. And if you haven't had a chance to go see it, oh my God, like check it out. This is... These are my concrete toads that are in the exhibition. They oh come my in multitudes of colors, but this one was specifically painted purple for show. Yeah. And um, the exhibition is extraordinary, like really extraordinary. Uh, it's so worth the trip down to Sea Space to see. Um, and it's only up until like the 23rd or... Yeah, the so Saturday of that week. Yeah, so... Yeah. Just this Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and the next one. So try and make it down if you can. And uh, thank you for watching, whether you saw it live or whether you came and checked us out later. It doesn't matter. Whatever, that's the whole thing about the internet, sharing things when it's convenient for us, right? So um, I think that's everything I have to say for now. We'll see you maybe in August, but for sure in September at the exhibition. So September 17th is the opening at Okotoks Art Gallery. Okay, signing off. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.